Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Predworks, and today we're going to talk about the T distribution, or rather, the group of distributions collectively known as the T distribution. This is prerequisite to looking at things like confidence intervals, as well as the T test itself. This will follow a similar format as to when we talked about the Z distribution. Uh, additionally, we're going to go over the probability distribution function, which you see in the top right now. We're going to use two additional modules in this video, Math and SciPy. We've used SciPy before, so if you've been following around, that should still work for you. And Math comes with any Python distribution. We're going to break this uh, probability distribution function into three parts. The numerator, the denominator, and the polynomial on the right-hand side. We'll make functions for each one of those parts and then combine it together. The funny R looking symbol used in the numerator and denominator represents the gamma function. Gamma is similar to factorial, where the only difference is you're subtracting one from each factorial element. V represents the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is calculated by subtracting one from your sample size. We've talked about degrees of freedom a bit in previous videos as well. And then T is, well, simply our T score. We'll go over how to calculate T in a future video. So we'll go ahead and get started by defining a constant and then by making a range of X values that will represent each stepwise value for T in our T distribution. We'll go ahead and do negative six to positive six. The reason for this will become more clear later on in the video. We will step this by one one hundredth each time and then just append this value to our x. So it will be going from negative six to positive six in one one hundredth steps. So rather than write a function to calculate gamma, we're going to take a shortcut this time and just uh, import gamma from math. Now we're going to go ahead and define a function for our numerator. All it will need to take is the degrees of freedom. So we will start by calculating what is inside of the gamma function, which is just the degrees of freedom plus one divided by two. And then we will plug that into the gamma function and return our number. Next, we can go ahead and define a function for our denominator. This is a little bit more complex, uh, but still only needs to take the degrees of freedom. Next, we'll go ahead and calculate the number that needs to go inside of the gamma function, which is just the degrees of freedom divided by two. Now we'll go ahead and define what the gamma function is multiplied by, which is the square root of the degrees of freedom times pi. We'll go ahead and just define this as x. Uh, then we'll go ahead and get the gamma of the degrees of freedom divided by two, and then multiply x by gamma, and then return that number, and that will be our denominator. Lastly, we just need to get a function that will get that big section on the right hand side of our probability distribution function. So we'll take two variables, it will take t and the degrees of freedom. We'll break this into two parts. We'll break this into our base, call it x, and we'll just do that as one times t squared divided by our degrees of freedom. And then we'll do our exponent, which is negative our degrees of freedom plus one divided by two. We will then take x to the power of our exponent and then return that value. With those parts explained, we can go ahead and get rid of the function up in the top right as it'll start interfering with our screen space. And now we can go ahead and define our t probability distribution function. We'll take two arguments, t and degrees of freedom. So we'll just get our numerator, our denominator, and what the last part we called was our uh, poly. And we'll return the uh, probability value. This will allow us to map out the probability distribution function for a given t distribution at a given degrees of freedom. Next, we'll go ahead and import scipy.integrate. Remember, we have to take the integral of our probability distribution function to get the actual area underneath a given section of the curve. The probability under a given section of the curve is our actual probability. If you want a little bit more detail about how that works, go ahead and reference our video on the normal and standard normal distribution. 
So we'll start off with getting negative infinity, we'll start our degrees of freedom at 1, and then we'll do an empty list called t-table. And then we'll say while our degrees of freedom is less than or equal to 120. And then for row in x, we will get the probability and the error of our uh, integral of the uh, probability distribution function for t. We're not going to do anything with the error value, but we just need to stuff it into a variable anyways. And then going into the integral, we want to get our t, probability distribution function. And then we want the lower bound, which is negative infinity, and the upper bound, which will be uh, the x value. And then we'll go ahead and pass through one more uh, part as well, which will be our degrees of freedom. We will then append this to our t table. We'll call it degrees of freedom our t value and our probability value rounded to five decimal places. Lastly, we'll just increment our degrees of freedom by one. So now we have a full t table going from one to 120 degrees of freedom and going from negative six to six for the t value. So now we'll go ahead and stuff this into a table. We'll call it our t table. And this is the exact same as we've done for writing our z table. So we'll go ahead and speed through the rest of this. Now this is a lot more extensive than your standard t-table that you've probably seen if you've seen a t-table before. And uh, that's okay because we're not the ones that are going to be searching through it. It'll be Python searching through it. So lastly, let's go ahead and import matplotlib as plt. And we'll go ahead and plot our probability distribution functions for 1 through 120 degrees of freedom. This is similar to when we plotted our standard normal distribution. The only difference is that we are going to be plotting 100 different, 120 different distributions. That's okay though. We just do plt dot uh, plot our x y and then increment our degrees of freedom. And at the very end of this, we will show our plot just by doing plt dot show. We'll have this run in a new dedicated console and hit run. Looks like we have an error. Uh, we want args, not arfg. And try to run that again. Uh, and then it looks like we need to encapsulate our row with any list. Hit save and run one more time. And now we're going to go ahead and speed through this as it processes. There's a lot more than our C distribution, so this will take some time. Now we should have a graph pop up. There it is. Let's go ahead and resize this to fit our screen a little bit better. We'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, each one of these distributions represents a certain amount of degrees of freedom. Let's resize this to four so we can see a little bit better. And there we go. So we can see as the degrees of freedom rises, the t distribution better and better approximates the standard normal distribution. This is why at large samples, you can use a z test instead of a t test. Lastly, let's go ahead and open up our t table and take a quick look. So we'll see starting off at one degree of freedom, you can see that at a t-score of negative 5.99, the probability of that occurring is a little over 5%. And as we go up, we'll see that the value gets closer and closer to what we will see in a z distribution. Uh, one thing you can do off on your own is compare these two if you want the t distribution at a degrees of freedom of 120 versus the z distribution. In our next video, we will go over how to calculate and plot confidence intervals. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments below.